They are counting down the days until the first football game in Oswego, a season they didn't think they'd have just a few months ago, Dan. What began as a small brush fire in California has now turned into a state of emergency. Low attendance across Syracuse public pools had lifeguards wondering if families thought they were closed. The fire chief opens up to News Channel 9 to Andrew Donovan this morning about the department's overtime policies. Nearly 300 kids from across the country are in Washington this morning trying to become the next spelling bee champion. But sadly, all four of the local kids from Central New York did not advance to today's round. All during yesterday. Now over in France, we're learning more about the man who used a 20 pound truck to plow down hundreds in Nice on Thursday evening. French officials now saying Mohamed Boulal somehow became radicalized very quickly and wasn't on any anti terrorist intelligence radar. Investigators now think he may have ties with the commander of a French jihadi battalion in Syria. City police are still trying to figure out what led to the incident and how it happened and more importantly why. Officers were dispatched to McCarthy Manor yesterday around noon for a status check and found 60-year-old Sarah Brantley dead. And after collecting evidence, they quickly learned who the suspect was and were able to locate her son, 22-year-old Jamar Brown, just a few blocks away on East Genesee near Walnut Avenue. Again, police say they're still trying to figure out what may have motivated Brown to take the life of his own mother and whether he had a violent or criminal past. Now, if you know anything, the number to call is 442-5222. And Brown faces charges of second-degree murder and criminal weapons possession. One of central New York's most traveled roadways is going to get some changes for better safety. That's right, the Department of Transportation presented two options for a new Onondaga Lake Parkway at a public meeting last night. The first, to keep all four lanes, but install a median barrier. The other, to reduce the road to two total lanes, one for each direction. But this morning, News Channel Line's Andrew Donovan shows us one man who has strong opinions about the change and for good reason. Now, construction won't happen there until 2018, so there's still plenty of time for more meetings and for the public to share comments with the Department of Transportation. Maybe you want to bring yourself a big cold Slurpee to the you next can. Jazz You can. You can bring it to the Jazz And do you know why you can, Beth? Because today, 7-Eleven is making the most out of the last days of summer. They're hosting a two-day Bring Your Own Cup Day. <laughs> and it can be a big one, too. Yeah, well, only as big as the door, right? Tomorrow and Saturday, customers can bring their own cups from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. to okay. any participating store across the country and fill it up with a Slurpee for, get this, Dan, just a dollar and 50 cents. The only rule, like I mentioned before, is a cup has to fit through the door, which I don't know who has cups bigger than a door, but there must be somewhere if they have that rule in you there. Check out. In total, 80 veterans went on today's honor flight. And if you know a hero who you think should be on the next flight, you can head to our website, localsyr.com. We'll link you to the information there. Yeah, Karen Rod, don't let this area fool you right now. It's a lot calmer now, but earlier this place was storm. They had more than 300 people coming here so far looking for jobs. We're going to pan over and show you Margaritaville. Obviously, a wave of relief amongst people living here in the North Country that one of these convicted killers is no longer on the loose, but state police still in hot pursuit of David Sweat. Now, this is a fill in position. She will have to rerun again next year, but she tells me she wanted to do this so that next year she has a good foundation for that election. Good evening, I'm Carrie Lazarus. And I'm Rod wood concerns of unsafe levels of lead in water at Ithaca schools and now the district is shutting off all drinking water to each of its buildings while it evaluates what to do about the levels. Now students and staff are being provided with bottled water at Enfield and Caroline Elementary Schools. News Channel Line's Beth Cephalou is live in Ithaca right now. Beth, what is the district saying about the water? Absolutely nothing, Rod and Kerry, only referring me to their website for the same information available for these parents. Now, the district did two tests, one in August and one in January. Both of those tests tested positive for unsafe levels of lead in the water, but it wasn't until February that the school revealed this information to families and then started taking action. What's even more concerning, though, is that they revealed that back in 2005, both of these elementary schools, again, tested positive for unsafe levels of lead in the water. The EPA says anything over 15 parts per billion needs action. There was one water fountain in Enfield Elementary that had 448 parts per billion. So what did the district or even the county health department do when that happened? Well, that's a question not only News Channel 9 has, but many of these parents. Well, it bothered me a lot because lead could be really dangerous. I know people that have had lead problems and they're still sick from it. And with it being such younger children, like my daughter Hannah, she has a very low immune system. So it can affect her really bad if we're not informed about it. 
The EPA says even low levels of lead in the blood of children can result in behavior and learning problems, lower IQ, slowed growth, hearing problems, and in some cases, seizures and even death. We did talk to a faculty member off camera who says they too were left in the dark, only finding out in February about all of these tests dating back to 2005. Again, I want to stress the district will not say anything. The county health department only letting us know that the school is providing water and more tests are being done. But our investigation far from over on News Channel 9. We reached out to the state health department, the EPA, even the governor's office and these families, Ron and Carrie, also not sitting back doing nothing. We've heard that the PTA group at uh, Caroline Elementary has created their own water working group to investigate this and moms and dads now taking their children to the doctor's offices to test them for lead. For now, reporting in Ithaca, Beth Cephalou, News Channel 9. Back here at home, students at Syracuse University held a vigil to remember all the victims from the recent attacks in Paris, Beirut, and the Russian Metro jet over Egypt. A moment of silence, they hope, will spark the healing process and help each other push forward. Tonight, strangers turned into friends, standing together, mourning the hundreds of lives lost to terrorism. So we're all humans at the end of the day, and we all have feelings, and just innocent people died, so uh, we all feel sorry for them, regardless of our nationality and regardless of politics. Among those paying respects, students from Paris, France, still struggling to make sense of what happened. Yeah, even though we're not home, we have a little we stay home strong, here. We stay strong together. Yeah. Yeah. While the three girls say their loved ones are safe, it hurts to see their home hit by more brutal attacks. Less than a year after two terrorists killed several journalists at the famous French satirical newspaper, Charlie Hebdo. My first thought was, oh my God, this is Paris, January all over again. And I started crying because there was such a hard time, and I was still mourning people I lost in January. When it happened again, I was like, okay, I'm living the nightmare. But this time, I felt like kind of helpless. I was not there in my family. Millions of miles away, but the pain just as deep. I can't believe it still. It's still completely crazy. You just can't believe that your country is going through this kind of stuff and that people are dying. Reminding everyone tonight's prayers aren't just for Paris. It's about the entire world, about our democracies, and we have to fight for what we stand for. Standing together, spreading love that they hope helps the world begin to heal. Now, anyone that couldn't make it tonight, Syracuse University is holding another vigil tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. at Hendricks Chapel.